animal lovers may think veterinarians have a dream job being able to be with animals for work, but behind the scrubs may lie a doctor in crisis. And here to tell us why it's important to care for the people who care for our pets is author Sandy Weaver. Welcome to the show, Sandy. Thank you, Aubrey. Great to be here. So is it a misconception that veterinarians have the best job ever? I mean, don't they get to play with puppies and kittens all day? They do get to play with puppies and kittens all day. And most of the time, the puppies and kittens are very stressed. So if you think about times, if you have a pet, you've taken your pet to the veterinarian, they weren't real happy to be there. And so the vets deal with that all day, but they also deal with clients who don't follow instructions, with sometimes clients that are bullying or disrespectful to the staff, or they even fail to show up. Veterinarians have a lot of stress, a lot more than we think they do. So what do statistics show when it comes to maybe mental health issues among veterinarians? The CDC did a landmark study and found that what has long been anecdotally felt that veterinarians have a high suicide rate is in fact true. Male veterinarians are two and a half times more likely to complete a suicide than their peers in the normal population. And female veterinarians are 3.5 times more likely. And those veterinarians that are most likely to complete a suicide are the ones who are treating the household pets. That's our veterinarians, the small animal pets. So the, the CDC report was alarming. It came out before COVID and the pandemic has just made the problem worse. Yeah, definitely. Those are some alarming statistics, probably things that most of us or pet owners don't necessarily think about. But let's talk about clients because you mentioned sometimes pet owners might come in. Maybe they're a little rude or disrespectful toward um, veterinarian staff. So how are pet owners, these caregivers, how are they contributing to these mental health problems? In a lot of times, Aubrey, in ways that we don't even think we are. I've done it. I mean, I tell bad stories on myself in this book because we all do it without even knowing it. Um, being a little disrespectful, being late, looking things up on Google and then telling the veterinarian what we think the problem is and how it's supposed to be treated and getting irritated over the cost of care. Veterinarians have a lot of financial stress. They come out of vet school with upwards of a half a million dollars, half a million dollars in student loans. And then they have a practice that is very expensive to run because it's very people heavy and equipment heavy and space heavy. So they have a lot of financial stress. The last thing they need to hear is, you're charging me what for that, for five minutes? Yeah, that could definitely create a stressful situation. Sandy, and you mentioned you've written a book kind of talking about these different situations. Can you mention some of the other factors um, other than you know clients who may put more stress on the veterinarians, but other things that can play into these mental health issues that they deal with? Right, and with, with veterinarians, it starts with who they are. They are focused, driven. They've wanted to be veterinarians since before they were teenagers, most of them. It's more difficult to get into vet school, so they had to be really focused and driven. They're perfectionists. They're very hard on themselves, and they got into the, into the practice of veterinary medicine because it's a calling for them. They want to care for animals. And then they end up having to run a business and run interference between staffers that are, that are irritated with each other and maybe have problems with people not showing up. Um, their staffers included, their veterinarians, their, the other associate vets, the vet techs, everybody. There's all kinds of stress. And when it comes to suicide, Completing a suicide, whether it's a veterinarian or any suicide, it's always multiple factors. So looking at the clients and what we contribute to it, if we can take that stress off the table for veterinarians, then we take one tumbler in the key lock that turns and lets them complete a suicide, because that's what it is. It's like a, a key in a tumbler. All the tumblers have to line up at exactly the same time in order for the lock to turn and in order for the suicide to be completed. So if we take the client stress away, then we're helping veterinarians. So that's my goal. And obviously in this book, one of the things, one of the points you're really trying to get across is that we need to care for our pets caregiver, AKA yes. the veterinarian. So would you say that yeah. this problem, some of these mental health issues, is this a crisis? I mean, you mentioned the alarming statistics. 
it's a crisis in in veterinary medicine it's a crisis and so the 2.1 times more likely for male veterinarians 3.5 times more likely for female veterinarians is before covid started we have recently had an a huge uptick in suicides in the veterinary community and it's veterinarians and technicians and it's because of the pandemic it's because of more people have pets it's because the hospital protocols that say clients can't come inside because the staff has to be protected. Otherwise, they can't help animals if they all get sick and have to shut down. It's just been a big problem. It's been a big problem. And there's no research that says COVID has made it worse. It's empirical. It's anecdotal. And sadly, it appears to be truth. Well, when you talk about COVID, I mean, there is not one aspect of life that hasn't been affected in some way. And you just talked about some of the ways the, the issues they already deal with are probably being exacerbated. So what can pet owners do to help care for the people that care for their pets? Thank you for asking. Three really simple rules to follow. One, respect hospital hours and respect all the staffers. You would not believe some of the stories in this book. Just respect hospital hours. Even if you have your vet's home phone number, don't use it, or cell phone number, don't use it outside of hospital hours, unless they've specifically told you they can, that you can. And respect all the staffers. Don't talk to them like they're the paid help. They're there to help you and your pet. Be really compliant. Follow the aftercare instructions. If you're supposed to give pills every four hours, give pills every four hours. If it's a wrestling match, do it when it's your pet. If you want the pet to get better, you have to follow the aftercare instructions. And then appreciate the people who care for your pets. Treat them as if they are professionals because that's who they are. And send them thank you notes now and then. And if you feel like it, send them a present now and then. They appreciate knowing that they've made a difference in your life as well as your pet's life. Sandy, really great insight this morning, and thanks so much for sharing it on the show. If you want to learn more about supporting the pet care community, you can visit centerforworkplacehappiness.com.